Group them for me. Group them for me. Yes, bring them to me. All to me. Huh. This is insanity. Alright, let's give this a whirl. Wave 10. You know, we tried to scale Andariel's damage at first, and then we just realized that splintering is so incredibly OP. So, we're just going to slap that on every lightning build. And man is solved through life on hit and the starlight at life on hit from Andariel's, which people thought was a terrible change at first. But as a sorcerer with like 15,000 health, I realized it was not. You can heal, your, you can, uh, heal yourself a ton and then get all the mana back from the starlight aspect, I think. Alright, I gotta start moving around, spawning these events. Yeah, I was struggling in T8 last night doing like the, uh, you know, the initial drafts of Chain Lightning and Dariel's was Vuln damage to scale Vuln, but that's not the play. If you wanted to scale your damage and the Andariel's damage, we just, we can't get too much, we can't get big damage out of Andariel's. We have no real way to scale poison damage. It's like hard to scale your poison damage and your main skill direct damage at the same time. So you end up just like doing less damage trying to mix and match. Alright, um, let's get to these bosses. And we'll set a timer because I'm curious how long they're going to take. Set a stopwatch. Let's give this a whirl. And we're live. Yeah, cool, I got two next to me. I need them to stand next to each other. That would be great. Damn, these, these boys, these boys, tanky. My buddy said he killed these in a minute 30. Which, I'm already on 40 seconds. So I don't know about that. I don't know about all that. Maybe if you, if you get lucky... I gotta figure out... Okay, there we go. I need them to stand next to each other. Oh, wait, splinter. Oh, okay. There we go. We got triple, baby. Come on. No, come back. Come back, Shadow. Come back, my boy. Feels like Pit again. Just sitting there. No, come back, come back. Man, it's already a minute 30. That's okay, though. As long as I can get, like, three minutes, sub three minutes, I think that's okay. Might not even need these freaking unstable current cooldown reduction tempers. This orange herald is going so hard. Alright, we're at two minutes. The amazing thing is like this reduces your ice armor cooldown by so much. Because of all the, the mana uh, uh, your mana is draining constantly, so it's doing that uh, the ice armor node to reduce its own cooldown. We're at 220. And I have zero cooldown in this build. Not a single cooldown roll. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Just a little bit more. Alright. 2 minutes, 40 seconds. Okay. Sub three minute kill on T8 solo. Uh, my gear's pretty good, but you know, four ranks to conch mastery. My gear is pretty good, I will say that. Um, but you know, like only one, only only one GA on this. All right, I'll go over the gear and we'll go over the stuff. So it's in Zariel's visage. Uh, I don't think you need crits on life on hit. That's just what happened to me. I'd probably maybe like two on attack speed, one on life on hit. 
just to like make sure. I'm not totally sure with this. I think it's a little bit flexible. Uh, the next is uh, Tyrael's. I happen to get really lucky. This is you either want three hits on damage reduction or you want two on damage reduction and one on max resist to all elements. Uh, we have shredding blades on our gloves. Um, I'm not totally sure what the exact best fixes for this are. Uh, you don't need attack speed because you ha you get it all from Indarials and Starless. They hit the 100% cap. So this honestly looks good. Crit chance, crit strike damage, chain lightning. I don't think you can go wrong there. Uh, then you have the Axial Conduit Pants. Again, I don't really <laughs> know what the best masterwork hits on this are. I think you really can't go wrong. They might end up just being you want three hits on damage reduction. But all the affixes are so good that you can probably just send it to 12 out of 12 and like whatever happens, happens. <laughs> uh, boots of the Orange Herald. These are how we keep our unstable currents up all the time. Uh, and we needed a place to take an armor roll and I didn't want to take it on the amulet. Um, these should be attacks reduce evade. Because you're attacking so much that way you can evade all the time. Uh, you're going to want, this looks just about right, int armor and movement speed and then like lucky hit freeze you know for the utility tempers lucky hit stun it doesn't really matter pick something uh we have storm swell on the wand storm swell is double dipping right now so it's got that 30 percent damage that it does and then every time you press ice armor you get another 30 percent uh and then i think also if they're frozen you get another 30 percent so that's sort of why we do the lucky hit you aim for freeze tempers it's a little wishy-washy but don't worry about it too much um, int max life crit damage, chance for chain lightning projectiles to cast twice, crit damage. Uh, this build, and we're saving the best for last. So now we want excel, that way we can attack more, get more lightning spears out when we are during uh, in unstable currents. Uh, ideally on this I would want int cooldown and crit chance, and then crit damage, chance for ch chain lightning projectiles to cast twice. Uh, I'll go over the board, I'm not going to go over the skill tree though, because it's not fully decided. Uh, attack speed, crit chance, crit strike damage, that looks about right. But actually, you wouldn't want attack speed here because you're going to be able to hit the cap from Starless and Endarials if you if you do it right, I think. So I think here you would probably take crit damage, crit chance, and then either intelligence or vulnerable damage or something like that. It's not too big of a deal. Uh, unstable currents, cooldown reduction temper, that one's a bit of a flex. I would probably still take it. Uh, but I had a lot of time where I had my unstable currents cooldown back, but I was still casting. So it was like some of these tempers were wasted. So I wouldn't really worry too much about the UC. I, I'd probably still take them because I don't really think there's anything better. I don't think we need resource gen. Um, maybe on the ring you could take it. And then if you wanted something here, like max life or movement speed or something, that one's up to you. All right. And then starless. The crits on here, I took, I used this across multiple builds, so I took attack speed and crit chance. I don't think you can go wrong with any combination of attack speed, crit chance, and ranks the core skills. Uh, and then last but not least, the amulet, the aspect of splintering energy, which is basically doing most of the damage in this build. Uh, it's four ranks to conj mastery, and then you would want crit chance and you'd want cooldown. Um, conj mastery scales your mana regen, all your damage when you get all the splinterings out, when you get all the spears out. Uh, and then crit strike damage, and then the temper's a little flexible there, but see if you can get unstable, see if you can get unstable currents cooldown reduction first, and then if you, if it's like looking like you're going to brick it, just take like something safe, like resource, like something in the resource gen department, and just like call it a day. Um, we'll do, the enchantments are ice blade enchantment for, you get a bunch, you get six ice blades out, chop, 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 gets all your cooldowns down, that's really important, because we only have access to two slots to get cooldown, and I just showed that you can do it with zero, <laughs> but the two would be nice. Uh, and then Firebolt Enchantment just to scale your damage through Devouring Blaze and through Flame Feeder. Um, I, I'll do one thing in the skill tree. So I, this is up for debate. You can either take Greater Chain Lightning or you can take Destructive. What's cool about Greater is that you get more... I was running Greater in this. You get more damage out of the Chain Lightning, but when you run Destructive... You get a bunch of crackling energy, and then you can pick it up for mana. So I kind of I'll sort of leave that one up to you, because you really only need to make crackling, in general, for the charged glyph, so that you can get damage out of it. 
Um, so I don't know. That one's up to you. And the good news is you can just switch them on a whim. Mess around with the skill tree a little bit. Um, and let's do the paragon board. Well, we can do the skill tree. So it's like firebolt for firebolt enchantment. You know, you want elemental dominance for more damage. All the ranks in chain lightning. As I was saying, you can take destructive or greater. I don't really think it makes a difference. Uh, greater is more damage. Chain lightning is destructive is better on your mana if you end up taking these nodes. Uh, I, I do opt for destructive charge bolts. That way... I can, like, during Unstable Currents, it'll make Charge Bolts, and then it'll reduce the damage that the enemies deal to me. And that's actually pretty important, because we don't have a Shaco in this build, so that's 20% DR that we that we have lost. So I'm trying to find ways to make that up. Uh, let's see, next. Just take one point in Flame Shield. I just want it. It's good to have that Panic button. In Hordes, it can get really dense, and sometimes you get physically stuck in the enemies, and you need something to let you get the hell out of there. Uh, I just take the Bare Minimum and Teleport. Uh, I'm really just after it for the movement and for the 30% teleport DR. Three ranks in glass cannon. Uh, you could put one point in elemental attunement, uh, but that one's up to you. This is strange, as we never normally see points in ice armor. But because this build like doesn't have any barrier gen, I want a max HP ice armor whenever I press it. So to do that, I need either three... Or four points you know three takes me to 97 um, so when that I press my ice armor let's see two max life barrier uh, so the point of that is because you get the 73% max life from here and then the other 30% is made up by protection but one important thing is that if your ice armor gets broken uh, this node right here will no longer work because your ice armor is broken. Now you have to wait for its cooldown to come back up. So it is actually important to take like a bunch of ranks in ice armor so that it can have a fatter barrier and that way it can like never break. Because you, this node works while the chain lightning mana is draining from you and you'll see the ice armor cycle down, cycle down and then you'll have this up permanently. But if it breaks, you're kind of shit out of luck until you get it back. We take the summon ice blades. That's the whole thing with the ice blade enchantment. The chop, 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 chop. Uh, then we take lightning spear. We want it to stun, and it uh, makes enemies vulnerable for us. This is. We don't need any points in this though. This the lightning spear isn't doing the damage. It's the splintering aspect. Uh, next, conch mastery. You know, movement speed, damage, mana regen. So you should actually probably be pretty capped at movement speed. And the main reason I even take movement speed in boots is so that when I'm in town, I'm not, like, horrendously slow. <laughs> it's a bit of a QLL, but if you wanted to really min-max this for specifically doing hard content, you could take max life on your boots. Uh, mana shield and protection, you know, 30% DR. Uh, when we spend a bunch of mana and protection for the uh, barrier. Let's make sure I'm not going to lose all, the, all, my, all my rewards. Uh, three ranks in Dev Blaze. Uh, on your amulet, you could take Dev Blaze, like... You could take, like, Crit Chance, Dev Blaze, um, Conch Mastery. Because, like, as you see, this build does function without the cooldown. But those, good luck getting that amulet. And even better luck, like, finding an amulet similar. And then actually rolling for ranks of Dev Blaze. It's impossible. Um, so, just the... When you're doing the great... When you're doing Greater Chain Lightning, you really just need... You need, like, one or two points in this node. As you can see, I have a bunch of crackling around. You need to pick them up for the Charge Glyph. Uh, I just take the two points in Unstable Currents. I just want the attack speed here. Uh, and then we take three points in Electrocution, uh, so that enemies deal less damage to us. Uh, and then lastly, I do opt for Vers. Um, if you're, like, just starting out, and you're really having trouble with your Unstable Currents cooldown reduction time, you can, like, opt to do something... I don't know. Like, I would take Destructive Chain Lightning, so it makes a bunch of crackling. And then I would take the Supreme Unstable Currents... Then I would take overflowing. That way you could reduce your cooldowns. But like once you're once you're set set, you just do verse because it's more damage. All right, now let's do paragon. Make sure my big head's not in the way. All right, we're good. All right, so first off on the starter board we take reinforced. This sort of makes up for the fact that we don't have Shaco, because that's 20% uh, DR on Shaco. So this gives us 15, and we have a barrier all the time. I did find it necessary. Um, next, I take Elementalist. This is just 15% damage. Sorry, I need a drink here. This is just 15% damage. We pop over here a little bit. We grab this non-fizz. As you'll see, we hit our 
300% damage so that we can max out Frigid Fate as our next board, Frigid Fate. Uh, this is the 60% damage, and the whole board handles all the non-fizz that you need, so we don't need it on gear because we're not running Rasha. We're not running Tell Rasha. So that means, yep, we take the Enchanter here to give us 130%, and it's definitely worth it now <laughs> because of how much they juiced up this glyph. Uh, next, I take Charged. Uh, and if, if you're having issues with your mana, what you do is you swap Charged for Unleash because Unleash gives you 25% mana regen. So yeah, you just swap out charge for unleash. Uh, next is burning instinct. We're after this elite dr here, and unfortunately I couldn't grab this last node. But uh, another thing we're after is tactician, because that gives us a bunch of burning dr, and then we get some uh, damage to burning here. That's nice. Uh, we're only able to get a 39 in destruction, even though crit damage is really good on this build. But 39's enough. Like it's close. We're doing we're doing good with here. So I'm pretty happy about that. And that's on searing heat. Uh, the next board is Ceaseless Conduit. We're just doing a quick route path through. We just want the bare minimum and exploit for the 10% damage. And then last but not least, we take Flame Feeder on Static Surge. Again, the bare minimum. Just want the 10% damage here. And then we zoop down here and we grab Static Surge. That way our cast of Chain Lightning can make enemies vulnerable. I know we get the vulnerable from the Spears a lot, but this is still nice because of how it restores your mana. Uh, and it's 10% of your max mana, so you, you get a ton back. But my mana is pretty low on this build. I think the one thing that you'll notice is that I didn't take any mana nodes. I initially had them, and then uh, one of my friends who's been playing this build, he told me that I don't need it. So I took it off, and yeah, we didn't need it. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, is there anything else I want to go over with this build? I don't think so. Oh, there was. Let's look at the stats a little bit so we can see where I'm sitting at. Uh, I have 88 crit strike chance. That's without Asus. That's pretty good. Uh, my attack speed oh, is at 98.6%. Uh, everybody's different, so you, you sort of adjust your... Because I don't have any masterwork hits on attack speed here, it is okay that I have it on the ring. You just Between these four items, you need to get 100% attack speed, and you can figure that out. Uh, let's see, crit strike damage, I have a th almost 1,100. That's not too shabby. Uh, and we do, right on, the, right on the button, we hit our 300% damage with cold for Frigid Fate. Uh, and then we have a little bit of damage with burning. And the vulnerable damage is only 74, so that's that's fine. All right, we got 50% all DR, 67. Oh, that's because of the, the node. That'll you, So you'll get 67.4 once um, this node stacks up all the way. And let's see what else we got. A little bit of DR from vulnerable, some DR burning, and then DR with barrier. And yeah, that's that. It's it's a good build. This is definitely, I think this is 100% the way that this should be built. And then what is up to you is, I think Splintering should go on the Amulet, but an option is it could get swapped with Storm Swell. Um, where is that? Over here. So you could just take like a 1x Splintering instead of the 1.5x value. And the only reason that you would ever think about doing that is because Stormswell is bugged in like double slash triple dipping. So it could end up having more value on the amulet. But the good news is you can just codex back and forth and try. I'm just going to leave it as this for now because it makes the most sense. All right, guys, I'm lurking from Mobilytics. And that's my Chain Lightning Andarials Splintering Guide. And he's got 628 Aether and a T8. Good stuff. All right, peace. So I guess you're asking yourself, do I need Andarials to run this build? And the answer is nope, but it's a lot better with it. But what you can do is you can heal. You're still going to use Starlight, but we'll take Recharging on a ring, which is nice because we can get more crit damage tempers to scale Splintering. Uh, and then we will run Warmth tempers and Mana per second. So you get Warmth tempers on your helmet and your chest, and you get Mana per second on your boots, chest, and helmet. And then ideally you will have concentration and not mage lord you should have snow veiled uh because you have really good uptime in your ice armor and that way nobody can fuck with you all right uh let's hope this actually goes smooth etheric mass all right let's do soul spires all right we still got my thing all right pray to god i don't get nuked because by corpse bows they do be spawning.
We gotta take care of this desecrator. And this can get actually, once you get all these, we took a lot of Hellborns, this can actually get really out of hand very quickly. You can't handle them quickly. Uh oh, I'm stuck. Come on, we're good, we're good. This is where Snow Veiled would come in handy if I had remembered to actually put it on. But I think this is doing really good for an Uberless uh, CL build and a T7 solo. Because they're only shooting at you, man. Oh, yeah, get in here. Pull them in, baby. The more enemies that get stacked up, the better the splintering performs. Big shout out to anyone who stayed from the raid. I'll have to, th I'll have to find that guy and thank him, because that's huge. I remember streaming when I'd get like four viewers. Whew. Now we're getting up to 50. It's dope. All right, let's go see how the boss kill is, um, and let's see what the boss kill time is. That's actually the important thing. It can get up to 130 on the Andariel's version for a T8. I did it in 240 because my gear's not quite there, but let's get the timer going. Um, and there's some from the from the other from the main Andariel's build. There are some skill tree changes and a slight Paragon tweak. We dropped the Charge Glyph for Unleash to help our mana regen. And boss kill's fine. You know, they're going down. We'll, we'll get it. And unfortunately, the mana probably will be a little bit worse on the bosses. Well, no. It might actually be better on the bosses because warmth works really well on them. Kind of sit in between them, try and get close to two of them. Definitely lacking some damage. Uh... No, it's not terrible. It, this is looking like it's going to be like a three minute boss kill, and that's whatever. I think hordes are best done in group play anyway, so just like group up with a rogue who's got really good single target, and like you can do a lot of the AoE clear, and then like the rogue or the druid can like really handle the bosses better. I like how there's actually like defined roles, it feels like now, because like you really do want someone that's really good at AoE clear in the pit, and that's it's looking like only splintering builds for sorcerer are going to be S tier. But luckily we have a lot of shock skills and even like the winter glass stuff that can allow us to use the splintering aspect. We're at 140, so you know, not the not the fastest boss kill time. I'm gonna keep it a hunt Keep it a hunt But I think for considering the build like completely hinges on Andariel's giving you your life on hit for your mana regen, the fact that we can like keep it somewhat decent and do a T7 without this is zero Ubers, I think that's really I think it makes for a really strong build and something that's like achievable for a lot of players. Because I really hate when like a build needs an Uber to function. It's not nice for like the average player. Then they feel like they're missing out. And they don't like the guide. The build needs to function bare bones. And T7, that's the first tier in Infernal Hordes where you start to get Neath Iron. So that is like the bare minimum that a build needs to do with nothing in it. So player can max out all their stuff. Oh, these bosses are taking quite a bit of time, but that's okay. Gonna die yet, buddy? Three minutes? Okay, not terrible. I thought it was gonna be a bit longer. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, I gotta get near him, actually, so he can heal me. And I'll adjust the, yeah, I'll adjust the planner a little bit. Maybe we'll take some, like, re resource cost reduction in there and stuff. But again, <laughs> I have no cooldown rolls on my gear. No! <laughs> Alright, well, 
you get the idea. That's what I get for talking and uh and rambling. But uh thanks for watching guys. See you next time. <laughs>